Well, hello there. You catch me today on my way up to Chinook Pass. I want to get up there before they close the road for the season. And uh, if you just look, it is a glorious day today. And uh, so I'm going to be heading up uh, through Enumclaw, Highway 410, around the backside over to, uh, again, Chinook Pass itself overlooks Mount Rainier. If you continue on 410, you end up in eastern Washington, but they do close it. Uh, just look at that. They do close it uh, for the season, and uh, I'm hoping to get up there and uh, see some snow, have a snack, take some photographs, and uh, should be pretty good. So anyway, come along and uh, let's check this out. Hang on, hang on, that's not all. As I was saying, so I thought the other thing I would do in this video, besides going up and trying to take some photographs, is to go over something that I've literally never been asked, which is my motorcycle history. So I thought I would go over all the motorcycles I've owned and tell you a little bit about them, maybe why I bought them, why I got rid of them, because I thought it'd be interesting. Anyway, back to the intro. Back when I was 40, staring out the car window as I did often at all the motorcycles going by, my wife surprised me by suggesting that I just simply go and pick up a motorcycle. Realizing that this wasn't actually a trick, I took her up on the offer and began searching for a bike. The motorcycle I chose was a Suzuki GSXF, GSX650F, thanks Suzuki for such a stupid name. It was an end of the year discount so I bought it new from a dealership but I got a pretty good deal on it. Had I had more time to research or spent more time like I would now, I might have picked up a different bike, probably something more upright or naked or something like that. But as a first bike, it was actually really, really good. The first year I rode it about 10,000 miles, the second year 12,000 or so, down to Oregon and back and all around. I got my permit, learned how to ride on it. I even rode it to the MSF course. After a couple years riding and 24,000 miles or so, I fancied myself to be a more serious motorcyclist and so I decided to get myself a more serious motorcycle. One bike that I always lusted after whenever I went to the dealership was the Triumph Sprint ST and I was lucky enough to find a used one, a 2006 version with 9,300 miles on it, just a, a couple towns over. So a friend took me out there, I gave it a test drive and I rode it home. Okay, for keeping score, I have a Suzuki GSX650F and a Sprint ST, so a Triumph Sprint ST in the garage. I rode the Sprint for a couple of years and uh, another 20 something thousand, 24,000 miles or so on it. It uh, looks great, it sounds phenomenal, single side swing arm, fantastic front end, the, the gas tank was cool looking, just loved it. But I did find myself going pretty quickly on it because it had gobs and gobs of power and torque. And it wasn't actually all that comfortable. Wrist pain, neck pain. I was uh, a serious rider now, and so I was seriously suffering for, uh, for my motorcycle. Because I had my motorcycle, we, me and the boys that is, decided to take the Suzuki and transform it into a street fighter. So we took off the fairings and eventually took off the headlights, swapped out the handlebars and the grips and the mirrors and we turned it into a street fighter. It took a few iterations, but we finally got it right, and this thing started to look really, really nice. It's still just a Suzuki GSX 650F, so it isn't a lightweight exotic, but we love it, and it's a great bike that the entire family can use. Now my youngest son joined the army, and we planned a family trip to head out to Montana to visit uh, his relatives, his grandpa, and his aunt and uncles, and so the thought was we would ride motorcycles out there. My wife chimed in and said she wanted to ride too, so we had a dilemma of what bike to get. So the search was on to find her a motorcycle. We looked at a Suzuki TU250, but we ended up getting a 2015 Triumph Bonneville SE. 
We found it at a dealership in Southern California, so we used the airline miles. I flew down, picked up the motorcycle, and rode it back. I spent three days in the most boring I-5 northbound highway riding you can imagine, but I had the most fun I'd ever had on a motorcycle. And it was that trip that made me realize that motorcycling shouldn't be serious. It should be fun. For reasons I won't get into right now, uh, the trip to Montana didn't happen. My son joined the Army, shipped off to the East Coast, was stationed there. And what we did was we sold him the Suzuki and had it shipped out to him. And that was his primary vehicle for a while until he uh, bought himself a car. So I still have the Triumph Sprint ST and Triumph Bonneville. And I just found myself riding the Bonneville more and more and more. It was just so much fun to ride. I'd get on the bike, I'd start smiling. I thought I looked cool on it, I didn't, but I felt that way. And it was just such a fun bike to ride. I took it touring, you know, putting a Krieger bag on the back and heading down uh, the Oregon coast for six days. I rode it to Eastern Oregon, Eastern Washington, back and forth to Oregon, back roads everywhere, all over the place on this thing. The seat is a plank and a piece of junk. Once I got that replaced with an actual, I think it was a Thruxton gel seat, and I replaced the rear shocks, actually with some fairly cheap shocks. I, I tried like three different sets and uh, settled in on this fairly cheap set, which weren't really adjustable, but they were perfect. The bike was comfortable and I could ride it for a very long time and just had so much fun on it. I ended up selling the Sprint and for a while, I only had the Bonneville. It wasn't too long before my wife decided that she wanted her bike back and so that I had to get something else to be my primary ride. So the search began again and I ended up choosing a bike that's a little different. A lot of you probably don't even really know much about this bike. I had seen its brethren uh, up on a, a hike we had gone on to. It was up high. The guy was riding a, a BMW R1150R and I thought that was kind of a neat bike. He seemed to love it and they rode it all the time. He had a gajillion miles on it, you know, and usual stuff from a BMW, good quality, maintenance is pretty easy to do, etc. And so uh, I kind of kept that in mind as I pursued looking around. I actually found one in Seattle and went and took a look at it, but I couldn't take it home, and my son was graduating back in uh, you know, boot camp for us civilians, and uh, so my wife and I were going to be flying out that weekend to go be part of that ceremony. And so I wasn't able to put any money down or pursue that at all. And the guy told me, yeah, I can't hold it. You know, and I said, yeah, I totally understand. And they ended up selling it. So the R1150R that they had in the Seattle dealership was gone. Once I got back from Georgia, you know, I started uh, just sort of casually looking, nothing too serious. I still had a bike to ride. Um, but I eventually got a call from the sales guy who said he had another one that came in. But he said it was just a little bit different. In the email, he sent me some images of it, and it wasn't what I was expecting. It was an orange, sort of tiger-striped beast, but I am a total sucker for things that are different or unique, so I was intrigued. Yeah, I gotta go back. I gotta take a picture of that. Okay, photo stop over. How beautiful is this stuff? Look at this moss covered trees. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I don't think I'll stop for another picture though. I will, however, take a picture of my bike. Oh, I do love the way that sounds. Okay, where was I? Uh, right. So the BMW dealer in Seattle had emailed me a listing of a new bike they had gotten in, a new used bike, and it was a BMW R1150R, but it was the Rockster. No, not Rockstar, the Rockster. It's a little hard to explain. The Rockster was BMW's attempt 
to join the Street Fighter market. That's a little odd, because BMW is not really, at the time, was not really that kind of company. Well, let me show you. It's essentially a parts bin bike from BMW. It's very much a lot of the R1150R, but with some of the RS stuff thrown into it, I believe it is what they had said. So it's a little bit sporty. It's a little bit gentlemanly. Personally, I found it to be a phenomenal touring bike. The uh, seat was super comfortable, great material. It has a, uh, a bolt-on windscreen from the factory, so winter riding you could be completely barn door, but you could take it off in the summer, which was fantastic. Heated grips, because, you know, you got to have heated grips. It had lots of torque, so you could pass things anywhere. Uh, you know, it was not super fast, but I didn't need it to be. I've been, you know, I had that with the Sprint. This bike was really great on the open road, pretty good in the twisties. It did take me a while to get used to the telelever front end, which is a little bit odd if you haven't, uh, if you're not familiar with it, they brace the front and they do the shock a little differently so that when you pull the front brake, the braking force pushes back on the tire, but it's not pushing down on the front end, so you don't get any front end dive. So it's a little bit strange, you don't really notice it too much at first, but what it does is it really enhances your downhill cornering, and I found myself learning to go faster and faster and faster downhill. And I rode this thing all over the place. I, I even took it down to Southern California. A buddy of mine, uh, we were doing a little business uh, thing together, and he wanted to fly me down there. And I thought, you know what? It's such a nice time of the year. I don't want to miss out. So I took uh, a, a trip down. So I rode down for whatever it was, four or five days. I spent some time with him down there, and then another four or five days back. So all the way down to uh, Southern California and then back up Highway 395. I did a bunch of highways down in California and I created a bunch of videos. So my early videos from this channel all feature this BMW R1150R Rockster. So if you wanna check out not great videos, they are not great videos. But if you wanna hear and see the Rockster, that's the place to do it. Quite a bit of good video action, but uh, that's, you know, early on in my video creation kinds of days, but I rode the wheels off that thing. It had a single-sided swing arm. It was orange, just glorious, shiny orange. And uh, again, overall, absolutely love the bike, except for this one thing, which turned out to be a, a combination, which ended up causing me to get rid of it. The uh, valve adjustment service interval was 6,000 miles. So for me, that was a couple times a year. Not a huge deal. It only took about 45 minutes. You, you, the, the boxer has the uh, cylinder sticking out. You pop them off. You do the adjustment, you know, top to the center, all that. And then you go and you do the throttle body thing. Bit of a pain in the ass, but not too horrible. The thing that made it a pain in the ass was that the vibration in the handlebar started to get really annoying at about 4,000 miles. So I ended up doing this adjustment three times a year, which was just a pain. So if you're keeping track, I have a Triumph Bonneville in the garage and a BMW R1150R Rockster. Now, if you watched my update video on my Versus, you'll know why I got rid of the Rockster. I'll, I'll recap it here real quick. My um, father-in-law died a bit young, and uh, I wanted to ride with my wife more. I wanted to take her on the bike, go out and see the world, see this beauty. I mean, just look at the views you're looking at now. It's glorious out here. And I wanted to share that with her. But the Rockster was just not all that comfortable for her. The rear pegs are a little high, so that caused some knee pain. And the vibration in the back, just a bit, a bit too much for her to take. So in the research that I did, I found that uh, everybody was raving about the Kawasaki versus Pillion Comfort. And uh, again, as the, I went into in the other video, so I won't go all through all of it here, uh, that prompted me to sell the Rockster and buy my current bike, the 2015 Kawasaki versus 650. For those of you who have been following this channel and have seen my review videos, know that I absolutely love this bike. It is an amazing all-round bike. It uh, very much thinks it's a sport bike and loves to be wrung out of it when you're in the twisty sections. With the slight upgrade in the gearing, uh, I've lowered the RPM so when I'm highway cruising, 
it's a bit smoother than stock, still not fantastic, but manageable. Uh, it's lightweight, it steers great. I can do miles and miles and miles and miles on this thing. I've ridden more miles on this per month of ownership than any of the other bikes that I've had. And uh, I just don't see stopping at this point. My wife actually asked me recently, she goes, it's been a couple of years. Normally you sell a bike and buy a bike. And I was like, yeah, I just don't see the need to do that. I have no desire to do that at this point. I, the only thing I could think of doing would be either if I'm going to do more off-road riding, maybe I want something that's going to handle the gravel roads and I can go do my photography in the back roads more. So something like a Himalayan or a V-Strom or possibly a Tiger 800 if I was going to do more highway riding. Hang on, I think there might be a waterfall there. Let's take a look real quick. Sorry, back to the explanation. The reason for thinking about the Tiger is that it have a slightly bigger motor if I was doing a more highway riding and wanted something to be a little bit smoother for the open road. Subsequent to buying the Kawasaki Versus, my wife uh, just kept struggling with the Triumph Bonneville. It just was a bit heavy for her. The peg position was made it difficult for her to stop and stand up, you know, at a stop sign or stoplight. And so we decided to find her a TU250, and we thought, well, we could maybe lower it a little bit uh, to make it perfect because it's a lighter bike, you know, power was friendly. So we traded and traded slash sold the Triumph for a TU250. So there's a guy up in Seattle who had a TU250. It was mint. Thing was gorgeous, uh, as gorgeous as a TU250 can be. So I, I, I took the Bonneville up there, and essentially he bought that, and then you know he gave me you know, he traded the bikes, and then gave me some cash. My son, in preparation for deploying to Afghanistan and then getting out of the army, wanted to get rid of the Suzuki. Instead of just dumping it for cheap out in North Carolina, I paid to have it shipped back. I did a little maintenance on it, replaced a few parts, and so now I've got the Suzuki back. Fast forward a few months and we've actually sold the TU250. My wife just wasn't riding nearly enough. She'd rather go hiking than riding. So the TU250 is gone. So now my garage consists of this Kawasaki Versus 650 and my original motorcycle, the Suzuki, the GSX-F 650F. GSX-650F, did I say that right? <sighs> Suzuki. All right, welcome to Rainier. All right, we'll get, finally uh, get back to doing some uh, photography on this video here. But before we do that, I'd love to hear what your motorcycle history is. Leave me a comment below. All right, now we're getting up there. Get some nice views here. Yeah. It won't come across on the video, but nice mountain, snow-capped, bit of cloud. It's pretty. <laughs> it's definitely chilly, too. I don't think I'm going to stop and take a photo here, though. That's not the best view we're going to get today. Let's go up the road a little ways. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it has that cap on, the uh, cloud cap that you see. If, if you're familiar with the uh, Northwest, Pacific Northwest, Rainier, it's real common to have a, uh, a hat. Mountains up here, they all kind of get that way. It's pretty, though. We're going to go up, hopefully uh, get a little better view. And like I said, hit Chinook Pass. Looks like a clear enough day. We'll get a, a decent view looking back from... Uh, the Chinook over uh, Tipsu Lake. Tipsu Lake. Uh, you get to sit up above it, see the lake in the foreground, and then uh, see the mountains in the background, or the mountain, I guess. Hey, 
that might make a nice photograph. Eh, don't feel like stopping. I will say I'm just a touch nervous about the road conditions. It doesn't seem frozen to me. It's not like ice on the road. But there's a lot of snow up here, and it's bloody cold. So, I'm going to have to take it a little easy, I think. There's a pullout here, but uh, there's a nicer pullout just up here. You can see a much better view across the valley. It's a bit larger as well. Nah, again, no view today. Heading up there. It's a twisty corner right up here, up around the, the you can sort of see it up there. Rock wall, there's a barrier. So we're heading up here, hairpin, hairpin back up. We're going to climb our way up. Oh, that's kind of cool. Look at the uh, clouds down there. Kind of a misty scene. Not a great view, though. As we tell people, uh, just because it's pretty doesn't mean it's a great photograph. In the summer, I come flying through here. I love this section of the road, but... Uh, not today. It's uh, fine gravel everywhere. It's, like I said, it's cold, it's wet. I'm not sure how sketchy this is or isn't. I don't want to find out. We're going to do a little tiptoe in here. I hope it's uh, clear all the way up. Not really set up for riding in the snow. Do, 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 do. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Well, I am going to totally come right here and take a picture. I have to park up there, hike back. We are definitely doing that. That should work. All right, well, I'm going to go take a picture, and I'll be back in a moment. All right, get things backed up. Let's get out of here. Oh, I just can't believe how beautiful this place is. You know, I don't come up here nearly enough, and I don't live all that far from here. I mean, it's an hour and a half or something to get up here. Just look at this. But as I said, the early on, uh, actually right at the beginning, the uh, this road would be closed uh, pretty soon, actually, I think. So it's a uh, spring, summer, fall kind of place. Winter? Not so much. Really is pretty though. And more crap on the roads. Right right between the. Uh... <laughs> okay, that's not bad. But uh, I don't think it's so good. Alright, how cold is it? <laughs> see, if I was a younger man, I might goose the throttle and see if it spins the rear wheel or not. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. right around this corner some more glorious views. Uh, the key is to understand that uh, there's actually a view that's directly behind us that's really nice too. So as we go up here, you look out um, like where this car is sitting here. But if you look back again behind us, a little hard to, see, a little hard to do. Uh, there's a really great view back there too. So you get views on the way up, you get views on the way down, or obviously you can stop and uh, you know, look around. 
right up here. Around this corner, the, uh, there's the rest area. I think I've covered it in another video I probably did, 410 just briefly, a while back. There's a bathroom, parking lot, a little lake you can walk around, and then you can head up over the pass itself. There's another bathroom, more hiking. That mountain to the right there, lots of hiking. Lots. Of, there's a couple lakes back there. It's really beautiful. Um, obviously, today I'm not doing that. So, this is Tipsu Lake, Chinook Pass. Call it what you want. And it's empty. Come here in the summer during the, this place is packed, and there's always a line at this toilet. This is hilarious. Very nice. So I rode up to uh, Tipsu Lake, which is just up the road, but the parking area is covered in snow, so I determined to head back to where I had parked just a moment ago. And uh, from there, I'll hike up, have some lunch, take some photos. All right, lunch break over, photos taken. Back here uh, to rewarm my bike up again because it's been sitting just long enough to where uh, it thinks it's cold. More glorious view for you. Look at that. Cloud covering, blue sky above, spaceship, uh, the rocks. If you're going to be in this area, definitely recommend coming up and checking Chinook Pass out. It's, you know, like I said, it's a... Uh, fairly well-worn place lots of people come here but for a very good reason if you have the ability to uh, take some extra time you know bring some hiking boots change clothes or whatever if you're coming in the summer for example do a little hiking it's really nice I mean there's some uh, wildflowers a nice little trail like I said a couple of lakes it's really pretty if you actually spend some time it's not just this I mean this is nice but uh, you can spend all day up here and feel like you've uh, had a good time Wow, wow, wow. Love it. Well, I think I'll call an end to this video. Thanks so much for coming along on this winter ride. Hopefully I'll be able to get out and do something besides just uh, nothing. Hopefully find some breaks in the weather and get out uh, and just tootle around a bit. Maybe show you some of the area. If you have any suggestions or things you'd like to see or want me to do, please leave me a comment below. Thanks so much for coming along. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and click the bell icon to make sure that you are notified when new videos get uploaded. If you have any roads that you think I should ride, leave those in the comments below. And if you'd like to support my effort in producing awesome videos, join the BMR TV crew by clicking the support link in the description below. And until next time, get out and ride.